Hey everyone, me Kevin here. So this is a pretty late update here. It's uh, Friday, June 24th. Yeah, coupon expiration day, whatever. Here's the thing. A lot of folks have been pretty confused. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say a lot of folks, but some folks have been confused in the comments. I think most people pretty much get it. But every day, I try to do my best to provide value on what kind of research I'm doing and uh, what kind of warning signs that we're seeing, whether it's retail sales data, plummeting, the fact that only wealthy people are traveling right now and that even their credit card spend is starting to decline in terms of year-over-year -year growth, or uh, housing data, how we're starting to see an inf a substantial inflection in housing data in cities throughout the country where you've got over 15 to 20% of listings in Boise, Idaho, with price reductions throughout the entire country. You've got, instead of 2% of properties with price reductions, which you had just six months ago, now you're at 6 to 8%, so three to four times as many price reductions. Or the pain that you're just straight up seeing in stocks because people are fearful of profitless companies, whether it's Lemonade or Hippo burning, absolutely burning through cash, no improvement at all in their cash burn over the last year. If, if anything, it's like, how has it gotten worse? Uh, you know, there, there are other companies that we're looking at that we're like, wow, okay, yeah, like at least here's some potential sign of life. But the point is, when, when I bring this data, whether it's from Goldman or JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley or Barclays, whatever, when I bring this data, my goal is to provide you more perspective. However, uh, this perspective over the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks while some folks has come across as FUD or, you know, just something, just videos to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's like, look, I mean, if the news is bad, that's what I'm going to provide. It was sort of like the same thing that happened in January, where in January I was providing bad news and people got mad at me for just telling the truth. And it's really frustrating. But I wanted to provide this video as an opportunity just to say what I'm doing in terms of what my positioning is. So, my positioning in the market right now uh, is that I've got about $1.2 million in margin. Uh, the rest is in stocks. And that $1.2 million in margin is going to get paid off by three real estate properties that are closing worth about $900,000 in the bank to me after each closing within the next three weeks. So that's about 2.7. I'll set the 1.2. That brings me to about 1.5 in cash, uh, plus whatever I've just got sitting around kind of in checking accounts. And so that's probably going to put me somewhere between one and a half to two and a half million dollars in cash. The rest is all in. I mean, we're talking 20 mil plus all in on this market. I'm a big fan of going in on this market. I'm a big fan of taking the opportunity, even though it's painful, uh, to, to buy. Now, look, I had to pay uh, over $10 million in taxes this year. It's painful. The fact that I'm going to be out of margin after having paid $10 million in taxes, it's a freaking honor. And last year, I paid $6 million in taxes. It's crazy. Uh, and, and it's just, it's really incredible. But there are some folks who are questioning, hey, like Kevin, you know, but what about like Lemonade and what about Shift and, and Matterport or some of these companies that we were really excited about during a bull run or even a firm, right? And here's the thing. And, and I know not everyone's obviously part of the programs on building your wealth link down below. So you don't get me in those private course member live streams that we do every day. You don't get the benefit of seeing every single move and decision that I'm making. But a lot of these companies Unfortunately, we've had to move out of, and we've moved out of a long time ago. I mean, at the latest in January, uh, that doesn't mean I didn't leave unscathed, but I mean, certainly left a firm substantially higher than where it is now. So, uh, in, in, in the back when it was in the 40s, which sounds crazy to say, uh, you know, Lemonade back when it was like 65, you know, Lemonade's like 20 bucks now. It's crazy. Shift Technologies back when it was like six dollars and. 50 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents, somewhere on there. Uh, it, you know, now it's like an 80 cent penny stock. And it's crazy because it's so unfortunate that even though we talk on the uh, on the public channel about, uh, hey, here's sort of my thoughts on, on uh, the latest trades, not everybody watches every single video. So not everybody knows, ah, oh, crap, okay, Kevin's out of a position now. And so what you get is you get these, these like, you know, uh, unfortunately, folks that aren't paying attention as much as they should in the comments are like, oh, how's that shift stock treating you or whatever? And it's like, well, I hate to say it, but just on June 3rd, we did like a 30 minute deep dive on it on uh, in, in a course member live stream. And we're like, oh, they don't got a lot of quarters of cash left. 
there are some serious concerns for a lot of companies out there right now. And so some people view this as paper handing or, or like uh, some people even think of this as like a betrayal. And I'm like, my goodness, no. But here's the reality. When you're in a bull market, you can make a substantial amount of money on stocks that are profitless companies that have a lot of potential, really good ideas and great leadership. That changes when you go into a recessionary dynamic. That's why I sold out of everything in January. I sold out of everything in January so I could rebalance and say, look, we can't go back into profitless. We can't go back into vision and leadership. We have to go into EPS. We have to go into high margin. That's where we have to position ourselves. And that's not to say that I'm not down either. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we're down as well, maybe somewhere around 30% on the year. I mean, that's roughly in line with the QQQ. That's painful, right? It's painful to be down. But I want to be clear. I'm almost all in on this market. And that's not to say that you should be all in. It's not to here to try to give you financial advice. It's just to provide this clarity that in case you're wondering what I'm doing, even though I'm posting information that, that is negative, the information that I'm researching and that I find negative is still not bad enough to discourage me from being in this market and buying. If anything, it creates opportunities. Now, some folks are like, well, Kevin, are you shorting the market right now? No, I can't see myself shorting at 0% on the QQQ fibbies, right? Which is about 318 on the QQQ. Uh, although we have extended past that down about another 10% to about, you know, 275 to 285 on the QQQ. So we've had another uh, couple stretches below that. And uh, that's painful as well. You know, technical analysis, you could see floors break on TA. It's just the way it works. But uh, I'm, I'm so confident that I want to continue to bet on Train America that I'm not willing to leave. I'm here. I'm not going to quit YouTube and keep making videos. And I'm going to keep reporting on stories, even if they're negative. Uh, now, a lot of these stories, we do get to go into a little bit more depth on, obviously, in the course member live streams, because you all bring those questions, which is great. And if anybody uh, watching this now wants to join those, remember, we've got a coupon code expiring tonight. Which all, all that means is the price is going up, right? The price just goes over time, it just takes up. You know, other people, in my opinion, that provide substantially less value for their courses charge like two or $3,000 for a course. You know, we, we charge a fraction of that. And we've got partnerships that give you discounts at, at Lowe's. We've got uh, other partnerships. I mean, we've got phenomenal things uh, for the courses or coming to the courses. So very excited about those. But I just want you to know that, uh, you know, just between uh, you, me, and, uh, and the comments section, I'm in on this market. And I'm optimistic about this market. I'm not optimistic about real estate. I'm trying to move from real estate into stocks. And uh, I, I think in two or three years, we're going to look back and go, wow, dude, I wish I bought more in the summer of 2022. Damn, that was another opportunity after the 2020 March fall. Uh, and, uh, and, and so I'm very grateful for being able to build whatever positions I can, obviously with money that I don't need. That's the other important thing is don't put money into the stock market that you're going to need within the next six to 12 to 18 months. Like the way I look at it is if the stuff that I'm buying goes down in value, okay, what does that mean? I guess I'm buying less real estate. Is it really going to make a difference in my life? No. So if I had, uh, if I was married and, and we each had, let's say a hundred thousand dollars salary and, and we had a uh, hundred thousand dollars in stocks and, uh, you know, maybe a hundred thousand dollars in cash, I'd probably be mostly in right now. I probably wouldn't be too terribly much in cash right now. And if that means uh, I burned that cash and maybe in the future I wasn't able to buy another rental property, well, then so be it. But I have the belief that's not going to make that much of a difference to my life, right? We're still making 100K each, right? That would be the impression that I would have. But I would also be thinking to myself, okay, well, like, hey, if I do go into stocks and, 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 my, and my stocks have in value, is that going to change my life? I'm going to keep working my job, assuming, of course, you have job security. And so this is where you do have to buffer a little bit the factor of, well, we, you know, what if we go through a recession, whether it's shallow or deep, and, and we end up having job loss, right? So that's another reason to potentially increase an emergency fund. But, but beyond that, folks, I, I can't be as, as much as I like to provide information and, and report on statistics and deep research that I'm finding. 
I also just want to be as clear as possible. Like, I'm a bull on this. And that's not to say that we're going to have a great market the next few weeks or the next few months or whatever. I've said almost every time I've been asked about the market in 2022, this year is going to suck. I've said that over and over and over again. You know, doesn't mean you could be perfect with exactly how you time the market, but boy, oh boy, am I glad I reset my portfolio by getting out in January, getting away from profitless tech and low EPS tech, going to high EPS and high margin tech. I think that's a great opportunity because in a few years, I expect to be able to look at my portfolio and go, oh my gosh, I could have never imagined that. But that imagined wealth is not something I need, but it's something that I expect by buying in these painful times. The time to invest are the painful times. It was the March of 2020. It was the October of 2020, right before the election. Who here? Leave me a comment down below. Were you here watching this channel right before the election? Do you remember me saying the time to buy is the time of uncertainty, not certainty and clarity? The time to buy is when everybody's freaking out, when there's blood on the streets, right? Be greedy when people are fearful. People are fearful now. Take advantage. I hope this helps you. Course members, you know we're going to be doing more fundamental analysis. We did four fundamental analyses today. We'll be doing more in the coming weeks. We'll keep hunting for deals. Everybody else, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great weekend. Check out that coupon code link down below. Yeah, the price goes up this weekend, but whatever. I hope to see you, but if I don't, we'll see you on the channel. Thanks so much.